Hi everybody, I'm Trey Johnson and today we'll be taking a road trip to find out some information about indigenous corn from our good friend Debbie. I'm sure almost all of you have eaten corn before and if I asked you to close your eyes and think about an ear of corn, I have a pretty good idea of what you're picturing. Well, the corn that Debbie grows is a lot different than the corn that we buy at the grocery store today. Corn has been around for a long time but even though it's still here, it's changed a lot throughout the years. The Kansas Museum of History is incredibly interested in figuring out how people preserve their culture through food ways, because as we'll find out, different foods mean different things to different people. Theo Nagata, Wadalusi Dakwado Cheleki, Debbie McSweeney Dakwado Yonagi. I'm of the Anayawea, and I come from the Doxy Gatil. I'm gonna talk to you today about corn, and not just the kind of corn you're probably used to, um, not just yellow and white corn, sweet corn, feed corn, but I'm gonna talk to you about some corns that date back really, really far, ancient corns, things that you've probably never seen before, that are very, very important to indigenous people. I am of Irish and Cherokee descent, and so my introduction um, first came through an elder in the Santa Clara Pueblo who gifted me with a flint popcorn called um, rainbow popcorn is what he called it at the time. That corn now is very popular in, in all the seed catalogs and they call it glass gem. As I said, my journey started with uh, rainbow popcorn, and I was dabbling for a while um, just with that. And then other corns started to come to me in really bizarre ways. Um, you start on a journey with these corns, and it's almost like the corn knows you're there, and so corn starts showing up. Eventually, um, I was gifted with about 14 very sacred corns for the Cherokee people, and these corns are basically almost extinct. That means there's only me and maybe another person or so that are growing them. So it's very important for us to keep that going because when they're gone, they're gone. The corn is very sacred to many indigenous tribes. And for me, um, as a person of Cherokee descent, corn is very sacred to us. Um, our creation story, our mother is Selu, and Selu is the word for corn. She brought us corn, she gifted us corn. Um, and so for us, corn is like so much a part of us you can't separate it. So it's not just, I think I'll grow some corn this year. It's just a part of our heritage and it ties us, just like our language, um, to our indigenous ancestors and who they were as a people. And it teaches us um, that kind of respect and just the food itself, when you eat it, it's, it's like being with your ancestors. It's very different than just buying corn in a grocery store. Corn, as we know it today, is not the same as the corns that the native people grew. The more color you have in a corn, the more minerals and vitamins you have. The corn of the ancient peoples was more dense. It was much more rich and fulfilling. You didn't actually need to eat as much of it because of that. So it's something to keep in mind. When you think of how much corn we have to grow today to feed somebody, you would have to grow less of this to feed someone because it was denser in nutrients and it was just, it was just a better corn. Um, and it was much more adaptable to the environment. That is another thing that we're seeing with the, with the environment, environmental changes and the weather changes. These old corns are very, very important because they are just like a wildflower in the prairie. They understand how to adapt. You have a year with drought. You have a couple years with drought. You have heavy, heavy rains. 
and um, they can adapt just in a really good way that we don't always have with some of our hybridized corns. We're gonna start with some of the older corns that I have. And this is called pod seed corn. And if you notice this corn, it doesn't have a husk like a regular corn would have. The husks are on the seed. We call this grandfather grandmother corn because this corn is so old that it holds the diversity and the um, genetics of almost every corn that's known today, okay? Because it came from so long ago. And I'll show you, when you take off one of these little, these little husky things, and you peel it back, you have the corn. And it's a flower corn, this one is, but it will also throw um, flint corns and other uh, types, popcorn kinds, because it has diversity. This was an actual corn that people used. Yes, that's a lot of work to get um, to the corn with all those husks, but remember this was a long time ago. They did not have jobs, this was their job. Their food and their survival was their job. So think of that when you remember these things. Um, so this is a really nice corn to have because for us, we honor uh, what it represents. And what it represents is so many genetic diversities of different corns for different tribal people. And I have another version here that we call the um, sacred great-great-grandfather corn. And if you notice this one, it has much longer husking um, on the seeds. But it's the same thing when you peel one back and you open it up, you will see a seed inside. And when these seeds would fall off like this with the husk, the husk would actually protect them until they could germinate. And there you have the seed. So it is a corn. It's just a very, very sacred old corn and not a variety you're gonna find <laughs> um, very often. And some tribal uh, people that I know, uh, like my friend Angela, in Onondaga Nation, they plant this around their cornfield as like a sacred protection, but it also can add diversity back into the crop, okay? So a very special, special corn. When we plant, we're very mindful and very full of gratitude to Creator for giving us this food. We don't approach our food as a convenience but an actual part of our heritage and who we are, and just deep respect that we have it. Um, very tied to your language. If you can learn your language and you can learn your food, you're halfway there.